Welcome to the section Batch Analytics with Apache Flink Transformations. Loading data. In this video, we are going to look at how to load data into a data set, how to look at the data set, perform from very basic operations on the data set, and then save, saving the result into a file. Loading file into a data set. We will look at one of the APIs, which is read text file. For that, first we need to open this shell in our Flink installation, as shown below. This starts the Flink shell. Now we are ready to type in the code. We can look at how many rows this file has, because we just loaded it as a text file. This has 65,434 rows. Let's look at the first five records, because we just want to see what this has. Here, dataset.first5 gets the first five rows, whatever they are, and dot .print prints them on the console. So this is applicable to any data set, so you can always do dot .print to any data set to print it on screen. And first helps you narrow it down to just a few records because we are just trying to examine what this file is. Similar to the file, we can also load an array like a collection into a data set. So in this example, you're seeing that there's an array or a list of strings. And from that, we are creating a data set by just using the environment function from elements. Let's see how this works. Now that the collection has been loaded into data set, we can again look at number of records or rows, and then we can just use the first five dot print again. Hence, we successfully loaded a collection into a data set. So we can repeat this with any kind of collection or an array or a list or any other way that we can get the data in, as you see. Now to examine the data set as shown, you always do dot first of some records dot print to see what it is that's inside. Dot count will count the number of records, but it might take a while if you have very large data set. So we just have to practice this and make ourselves familiar with these two functions because there's no point in writing any complex operations without looking at the data. So there are many basic operations that you can do once you load it into a data set. So the data set itself allows you to perform a large number of operations on it. In what you're seeing now, you're actually doing a transformation of each of the row because as you saw, each of the row was simply a comma separated value, right? It's just comma separated string, you can say. So here we're just trying to split it and take the second and the third token as our data set. Now we'll run this code on the console. Hence, this shows you the first five records of this. Here we transformed each of the row into two columns, the comma separated. So we're just taking the description and quantity, if you see it here. Look at the original data set. So clearly we are able to just extract the second and the third column. Remember, Scala is like Java, so everything is zero based. So when you say second and third is actually zero, one, two, and three. So the invoice number is zero. One, two, and three. So two and three are description and quantity. That's what we're extracting here. We'll look at the operations of the transformations further in the next video. So for now, let's just look at what do you do once you do some operations on the data set and you're ready to save this for future purposes. So we'll look at one of the API, which is simply write as CSV. So if you remember, we just extracted the description and quantity, just two columns. Now we are simply going to write that as a CSV file. So for that, the API requires that you can write the write as CSV, but then you have to execute it. So we'll look at this in the console right now. To execute such operations, you have to look at the batch environment variable that's created in the shell when you start the shell and you type execute. So all the pending things right now will be executed. The reason behind this is 
entire computation or the program flow is based on the fact that Flink is a lazy evaluation program. The strategy is lazy evaluation. So unless some action is taking place, everything is simply planned. And then there's a logical plan, which is ready to execute. Hence, when we do a dot count, dot print, something happens that triggers the action and that triggers the entire execution of the logical plan, right? So unless you have a print or a dot count or something specific, nothing will happen. You can write hundreds of lines of code, all kinds of transformations, nothing will happen till you take some action. So that's the reason that when you say write as CSV, there's no such action. Hence, we have to type dot execute on the environment so that this write as CSV is executed at this point.